Okay, so welcome to uh, part two of section 2.2. Um, this is density curves, normal distribution, but this time we're going to look at how we standardize the normal distribution using the z-score uh, for the percentile. Uh, and then we're going to find the proportion of values at a specific interval and such. Okay, so first off, we're going to look at standardizing the normal distribution. If you remember from last section that in order to standardize uh, data, then we, are, we talk about the z-score, and the z-score represents the number of standard deviations away from the mean. So uh, all normal distributions are the same if we measure in units of the size of sigma and the mean from the mean as the center. So you can see the standardized looks like now. We have the zero is the mean because the mean is zero standard deviations away from itself. And then one is one and negative one represent the uh, one standard deviation away, either positive or negative. The two is two standard deviations and three is three standard deviations. Um, uh, if the variable x of any normal distribution and, the, and with the mean and standard deviation given, then we can calculate that z-score with that usual formula that we learned last section. Um, so what we're going to do is and we have a relationship on how to calculate uh, the percentiles from the, on the normal distribution table. Graph, um, and it we use the normal, the standard normal table, uh, table A, and it's an, a table of areas under the curve, uh, the table entry for each uh, value Z is the area under the curve of the of Z. Um, so um, pause this and find the standard. Uh, normal table. It is located in the back of the book. It is does not on a numbered page. So if you go back there, I'll describe where that's at. It's a very challenging thing to find. Um, and what we did in class is we put a paper clip in it. So it is on the it's on the T pages and um, if you go back from the glossary uh, you know so we have index all the way on the at the very end then we have the glossary those are the G pages get it glossary and then we have the T table to T pages which start with T. we're looking at the first uh, page T1 and T2 and they're labeled standard normal probabilities. Okay, hopefully you found that. Now, suppose we wanted, and it, they look like this. This is not the table we're going to be looking at, but it is one that I have as a file. But what, here's what it looks like. So there, it's labeled areas of standard normal distribution. Uh, the first column are the Z scores. So it starts out with negative 3.4, goes all the way to zero at the bottom, it even says negative zero. Uh, isn't that funny? <clears throat> and then it starts with positive zero, which is a repeat of the, well, it should be a repeat of, oh, never mind. The negative zero, uh, I'll explain that in a second. And then it goes all the way up to the positive uh, 3.4. So what this represents is this is the, the whole number and the first decimal place. The columns represent the second decimal place. So let's say, for instance, we're looking at this and we want the z-score from that. Then we would call that negative 3.43 because, see, that's the second decimal place. So that's why when we go down the bottom here, we have a negative 0.0. .0 and then this would be in the column of 03. So it would be 0 
would rep be represented by 0 0.4880. Now, none of the areas are negative because area can't be negative. And the areas represent uh, the, uh, the proportion or the percent to the left of the Z value. You see how that works in a second. Okay, so you should be looking at that in your book. And your book is, uh, you know, prettier than the one I showed you there. Um, so suppose we want to find uh, the proportion of observations from the standard normal distribution that are less than 0.81. So you go to your table. Maybe I'll just switch over to this. 0.81. Uh, that really should say 0.8. No, 0.81, two decimal places. Okay, so we go over here and we're looking at 0.8, positive. So we look at this row and then the one is there. And so you can see that the area is 0.7910. And so we look at the row we look at the column and the intersection of those two, and then that comes out to 0 0.7910. So what that represents is that there are, uh, the area is 0 0.7910, and what that really means is there's 79.1% of that bell curve is shaded because it's always to the left of that. Here's the 0.81 that we would have found previously, right? Because it's from zero to one, it's approximately in there. And everything shaded left is that way. So the table has all that information uh, for you. And so um, um, you don't have to, you know, you, you just simply have to have that table available when you're doing these problems. And yes, of course, you will be able to use the that table during the test. I will give you the table um, and you can use that. Okay, so hopefully that made some sense. Um, but that's how we find given that. So let's try an, an example problem. Uh, all right, oops. Uh, so we, let's find the uh, draw and find the area, decimal and percentage of Z score of 1.3. Z is less than 1.30. So you can pause the video and uh, come back when you're done. So the first thing we, we draw it. So I'm just gonna do a horizontal line over to the right someplace. Um, uh, you know, the one is about in here. So I'm just guessing that it's right there. And it's not, again, it's not necessary that you draw it exact, just approximate. Uh, then I'm going to shade it to the left. So there's how you would draw it. Um, you would then going to find the area. So you go to the Z table and let's go ahead and go find that 1.30 from the Z table. Uh, okay, one. So we're looking for a positive 1.30. So we go here to one. We look at the 1.3. And the zero would be uh, 1.30, uh, 0.932, which I can see I already have it different here. Okay, so I have 0 0.9032, and then I change that decimal to a percentage. So that represents 90.32%. All right, try the rest of them, see how you do. Okay, for part number B or letter B, then we have a, a negative 1.12. So I draw a horizontal vertical line at about 1.12 standard deviations. I then go into shade to the left because I want it less than. 
and go to the Z table. Okay, so then it comes out to, from the table, 0.1314, approximately. Uh, C is 2.55, that's way over to the right, and so you're going to get this shading going on there. And from the table, we get 0.9946, or 99.46. Uh, the last one is greater than 1.5. So my, the line is on the left side and I'm gonna shade this way. So in order to get that, I have to look that up. And so negative uh, 1.50 is point, point 0.0668. And then I subtract that from uh, 100 because that would represent that area. Okay, let's take a look at uh, back in your let's take a look at back in your book uh, page 115 an example on that page called catching some Z's. Uh, the problem is find the a proportion of observations from a standard normal distribution that are between negative 1.25 and 0.81. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the uh, I'm going to draw the 0.81. So I estimate that as 0.81. And I'm draw shade it to the left. So then I'm going to find the area for that from the from the Z table. And if you look that up, go ahead and pause, look it up. You should get uh, 0 0.7910. And then I'm going to find the negative 1.25 percentage from the table, which I, comes out to 0 0.1056. And I'm going to subtract those two because I want to subtract out that piece that would be over there so I can get between those two and so the area is going to look like this and so I subtract the difference between uh, 0 0.7910 that's why I did the 0 0.81 first because uh, I knew that I was going to take that and subtract out the negative uh, 1.25 and so it comes out to 0.6854 which represents 68.54% would be the area. All right, let's try another, some more practice for that. You can go ahead and pause and calculate these and then come back when to check. Okay, so I'm uh, doing the 1.65 is the positive one, putting that on the right. Um, the negative 1.33 is on the left and the area between looks like that. I find the z-score of 1.65 is 0.9505. The negative uh, 1.33 is about 0 0.0918. And the difference between those is 0.8587 or 85.87. For the second one, I put the 1.79 there. I then sub put the uh, actually, I put the 0.5 first and then the 1.79 and shade between. 
1.79 is 0.9633. Z-score of 0 0.5 is 0.6915, and then I find the difference is 27.18. Okay, so that's how you find areas and areas between. Um, now it's time we're going to go backwards. Uh, we're going to go from the area, from Z-score to area. Oh no, from, from area to Z-score. I said that right the first time. Um, uh, so what if we know what the not, we have 90th percentile and we want to know what the Z-score on that is. Um, so we don't need to know. We're not going to calculate it using the formula for Z-score or anything like that. We're going to use the table. So the first thing you do is you change the 90th percentile into 0.9. Now this information is going to be found in the middle of the table. And so we're going to look for the area that's closest to 0.9. So here's a portion of that. So you should go to your uh, standard table and just let them look at here. So we're going to look around the inside for a 0.9. Uh, we only have two decimal places, uh, but this gives us four. So we're going to look at that. So here we have some 0.9s, right? Here's a 0 0.932, 0 0.90, 0 0.90. Those are the 0.90, so it's 32, 49. Here's 0 0.9015, and here's 0.8997. So somewhere around there. So you should figure that the closest is 0.8997, because that is only uh, three ten thousandths from. 0.9000000, zero, 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 right? And uh, so then we're going to go outward and we're going to read the row. So the z score is 1.28. So the uh, z score is 1.28, which starting from the middle and going to the outside. So you have to know that you're always using the, the margins, if you will, right? The z's are on the margins. These are not z-scores. These are areas. So if you're given the percentile or the area, you can uh, figure that out from that table. So let's try a little practice on your sheet. You've got 36.7%. Uh, that comes out to a z-score of negative 0.34. 2.5%. Remember to change it to a decimal. 0 0.025. And then find the z-score. That comes out to negative 1.96. And 92.5% comes out to 1.42. If you're having any trouble with that, with that um, uh, let me know and I can... Uh, help clear that up. Okay, so a summary of, uh, uh, of how to do this, how to uh, do some normal distribution calculations. Uh, we can answer a question about areas of any normal distribution by standardizing. Remember that's making zero, the mean is zero, uh, and using the ta table A or by using technology, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, first off, we state the distribution and the values of interest. Uh, we draw a normal curve with the area of interest shaded. And we state, we show the mean, the standard deviation, the boundary values, and then we perform the calculations. Make sure you show your work. And then we answer the question. Okay. So for the next part, you're going to need your calculator. So if you don't have it ready, pause the video right now. Go get it. You should have a graphing calculator for this. All right, so now we're going to use technology to go find uh, z-scores, and we're going to calculate areas for that. We're going to use a function called normal CDF. Uh, the normal CDF command uh, will find the area under a normal distribution curve. 
Uh, I'll show, tell you where it's at in a second, but here are, is the format for it. Um, the <coughs> it requires these parameters. <coughs> the lower boundary, the upper boundary, the mean, and the standard deviation. Um, if you're using a TI-84 uh, or any of the TI-80s, then it's going to be second bars button, which equals the distribution. And then you'll see it is on the list normal CDF. If you use an Inspire, uh, press the menu, select six, select five, select two for the normal distribution. So here's an example. What portion of the observations from the normal distribution is less than negative 1.78? So you have to do this by uh, 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 with these parameters. So we're going to use a very large number. So this is a negative one times 10 to the 99. You don't have to use that number. You could just use 99999 or something like that. Because uh, what that means is the lower limit, if you think about the bell curve, will be way the heck to the left. And so you want just a very large number there. And then this is going to be the upper limit. The upper boundary is negative 1.78. And then because we're standardizing, the mean is a zero and the standard deviation of one. Okay, so on your calculator, you put those in uh, and then you select paste and then you enter that. And then your answer should be 0 0.0375379306, which is ridiculously too many decimal places. Remember the table only gave us four decimal places. So it's perfectly fine to just list it with four. You shouldn't go less than four, but four decimal places. Then you should write something what it means. This means that 3.8% and we'd move the decimal over twice, about 3.8% falls to the left of Z score of one negative 1.78. Uh, let's try another one. Uh, what portion of the observations from the normal distribution are greater than one negative 1.78? 1 so for this time, we're going to use a very large number for the upper boundary. Notice I just used a uh, million, I think I did, which is probably too many, but anyway, it's very large. <coughs> now the lower boundary is 1.78 and mean of zero, standard deviation of one that you should have got 0.9624 and so on and then make a statement this means that 96.2 percent fall to the right of z score of negative 1.78 incidentally because the that we're using the same boundary there the upper and the lower add to 100 percent so you could actually then just subtract the first 0.375 or so from one. So after you get this answer, then you just hit minus one and then ignore the negative sign. And then you would have the to the right uh, area. Uh, all right, let's try one more. And that is what if we're looking for the observations between a negative 1.32 and less than 2.18. And with the table, remember we had to find both areas and subtract it. But with technology, we simply put in the neg the lower boundary as the lower and the upper boundary as the upper and then the zero and the one. And that calculates the difference between the two. And of course, that means that 89.2 fall between those two Z scores. You could also have done the uh, left and the left and then subtracted the two. I don't know why you would do that though. Because the calculator does it for you. Okay, so now what if we want to go backwards, of course. Now what if we're given the area and we want to calculate the z-scores? Um, you first state the distribution, draw a normal curve, uh, shade, uh, State the mean, the standard deviation, unknown boundary, to be clarified. Show your work. And now we're going to use this other thing to answer our question. So on your calculator, uh, we have a, 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 a 
function called inverse norm. Uh, so um, we're going to use that to find that's this is the inverse of the normal distribution, which means that it's going to give us the z scores. It's not really clear on the name, but uh, neither was the other one. You just have to know the difference between the two. Uh, the parameters are area, the mean, and then the standard deviation. Um, on a TA84, that's second bars, and number three will give you the inverse normal. Mm -hmm. And on the Inspire menu, six stats, five distribution, seven inverse normal. So the question we're going to do is what is the 90th percentile of a the normal distribution. So because it says normal distribution, we know that the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. So we simply put in these three parameters this time. And this calculates this as the z-score. And then you make a statement. This means that 90 percentile would be, have a z-score of 1.28. So that's pretty straightforward, huh? Now, here's a test note both for the AP test as well as mine. If you use technology to calculate the area of the z-scores, you must show the function with the parameters that you put in. So you must put in these labels. You must put area colon 0.9, mu colon 0, sigma colon 1. Same with the normal CDF, lower, upper, mean, standard deviation. If you leave those out, if you just have an answer, or if you just put it like, you know, without the labels, you will not get full credit. Not my rule. Okay, so let's try an example problem. On page 118, it is called Tiger on the Range. So this has to do with uh, Tiger Woods, who practices uh, and... His, the balls he hits on the driving range follow a normal distribution. Um, the mean of his, his drives are 304 and a standard deviation of 8 for a particular club. Um, the question is, is what percent travel at least 290 yards? Okay, so to do this, um, we're going to standardize the z-score so, we, so that we can use a normal distribution. So we start out with a drawing as we, you should be, form this habit and you sketch this out. Um, put the 304, this is the mean that's given. Standard deviation, you don't actually have the list but you're just looking for the 290, All right? And so we're going to shade the area that we are looking for because we're looking for uh, at least 290, that means it could be more. Okay, so one way to do that, let's do it both ways. First, we're going to use the table. So we have to calculate the z-score. The 290 minus 304 divided by the standard deviation of 8 gives us a negative 1.75. That is our z-score. Go to the table. Score of 1, negative 1.75 gives us an area of 0 0.0401 to the left. We subtract that from 1 in order to get the area to the right. So uh, 0.9599 would give us that. Or we use technology and we choose in the normal CDF to lower of 290 and the upper of a million. And standard deviation, I mean mu of <laughs> 304 and standard deviation of 8. And that comes out to 0.9. Five nine nine, and then you answer the question. Ninety-six percent of Tiger Woods drives go at least ninety yards, two hundred ninety yards. Pretty straightforward, huh? Um, one more example, and that's exercise on page one thirty, uh, number fifty-three, uh, fifty-three A. So the length of pregnancies, the length of human pregnancies. Oh. Stop. Ugh. Dang it.
Okay, let's try an example on page 30, uh, number 53. Um, and it's about the length of pregnancies. Uh, the length of human pregnancies from conception to birth varies accordingly to a distribution that is approximately normal with a mean of 266 days and a standard deviation of 16. Okay, so we get uh, this normal distribution in days. Um, at what percentile is a pregnancy that lasts 240 days? That's about eight months. Okay, so we start out with a normal distribution uh, graph. We label it with the 266 as the mean and the 240. Uh, we're going to standardize this. So we're going to uh, figure out the z-score. So we shade the area that we're looking for. We're finding it to the left because it says uh, at least, it doesn't actually say on mine, but that last 240 days. So we're going to find that area there. So we standardize by calculating the z-score of 240. So 240 minus 266 over 16 is negative 1.63. We then use the table. One method is to use the table. So we simply find use the z-score of negative 1.63 and find the area to the left, which is 5.2%. Or we use technology using a normal CDF, a lower of zero. No. Damn it. Or we use technology uh, and we, we find that uh, we use a lower of a million and an uh, upper of 240. Oh, that's why it was zero. Oh, it's not a million, damn it. Or we use technology by using a normal CDF function and the lower of zero, that's pretty far away. So that's, that's far enough because we didn't standardize this. We're using the straight up numbers. Um, the upper is 240, standard deviation of, I mean, mean of 266, standard deviation of 16 comes up 5.2%. Uh, and this means that 240 days is about 5.2% of human pregnancies. Now, side note, uh, the normal distribution is just an approximation. According to the process, it can't predict how many pregnancies will be exactly 240 days. But what this is saying is um, 240 days or less is actually what it's saying. Uh, okay, so let's go back to uh, page 119 and take a look at more of the uh, let's take a look at uh, more on tiger in the range so uh, what percent of tigers drives travel between 305 and 325 so if we recall we have a normal distribution of 304 uh, as an average and eight standard deviation so to do this, um, we, we have this graph going on here. So we're going to calculate the standard score um, by standardizing. So we have uh, uh, z equal to x minus mu over sigma. And then, uh, so 304 minus 30, 
305 minus 304 over 8, which is 0.13. Um, that is going to be the uh, lower 305, 305, and then we standardize the upper. So we get a 2.63 for the upper. And then we are going to uh, take the area to the left of 2.63. Uh, so in order for us to use the table, we have to standardize it to z-scores. We can't just use the number straight out. And then the 0.13, which is just barely over the mean, and then because we want the area between those two. So by using the table, we get 0.9957 and 0.5517, and that equals 0 0.4440. Uh, we could have also use technology by using a normal CDF, lower 305, upper 325, mu of 304, and standard deviation of 8. Uh, and then we, of course, answer the question. About 44.4% of Tiger's drives go between 305 and 325. All right, so let's just jump back to uh, page 130 jump back to page 130 and, and look at the second question uh, of the pregnancy problem. Um, the length of human pregnancy according, varies accordingly to normal. So here's our normal distribution numbers. So what percent is between 240 and 270? So go ahead and pause the video, calculate that, either using the table or the technology. I will do both so you can check your response. Okay, so we standardize uh, both of the areas. First, we sketch it out. We put the, the mu here, but now we're going to standardize. So we first find the area of the 240. So that comes out to negative 1.63. We already calculated that once right and then that area is 0 0.0515 from the table we then find the 270 and that shaded to the left that should be shaded all the way over including all of that and then 270 minus 266 over 16 that gives us a 0.25 uh, we find that area, which is 0.5987, and then we find the difference between those two, which is 0.547, which means from the table, 54.7% of the pregnancies are between 240 and 270 days. Um, or if you use a technology, you should have put the lower as 240 and the upper as 270, and Mu of 266 and sigma of 16, that comes out to 54.7 also. It doesn't show that, it shows a point zero uh, or point five four seven. So, and don't forget to answer the question for that. Okay, um, let's go to page uh, 120 and look at an example. And this has to do with blood cholesterol, high levels of cholesterol in the blood, uh, increased risk of heart disease. For 14-year-old boys, the distribution of blood cholesterol is approximately normal with a mean of 170 milligrams of cholesterol per deciliter of blood and standard deviation of 30 milligrams per deciliter. What is the first quartile of distribution? Hmm, first quartile. You may pause and do your calculations and then come back. Okay, recall that the first quartile is between 0 and 25%. Mm -hmm. So it's the 25% we're looking for. Well, let's take a look at the graph. Um, well, what happened to our... Anyway, we're looking for an area that represents 25%. So 
now we're going to go backwards remember and so we looked that up on the table and 0.2514 is the closest to 0 0.2500 right to right and so we then uh, take that uh, as negative 0 0.67 as our z-score we can then use our formula because now we have the z-score and we're looking for the observation so we put in the z-score of negative 0 0.67 don't forget that negative because it's going to be important and then 170 is the uh, mean and standard deviation of 30 that's given about Pause and calculate that. You have it already. So we do a little algebra. 30 times on both sides and then add 170. And that comes out to 149.9. So that means the, uh, in, if you're doing technology, you would do an inverse normal area of 0.25, mu of 170, sigma of 30. Both of those give you about 150, the first quartile. So either way, it's fine. Um, let's jump back to the uh, exercise, page 130, and back to the pregnancy question, and do part C. The length of human pregnancy, according to that, is normal. And so here's the data that we have. So the question will be is how long do the longest 20% of pregnancies last? the longest I don't like the one Lawrence have about the top 20% of pregnancies okay go ahead and pause and calculate that so let's look at the distribution graph so we find this area the top 20% would be right up here that would represent the longest so what we're going to do on table A is we're going to find, have to find the 80% because remember it's always to the left. So we take out our table. Uh, the closest to 0.8 is the 0.7995. That gives us a Z-score of 0 0.84. 0 0.84. Um, and then we use the formula for the z-score formula and plug that in calculate that as 279.4 or you use technology and find the area of 0.8 and then you answer the question the top 20 percent of pregnancies were 279.4 days Okay, that's the end of uh, part two. It was a long one, I know. Um, and so um, the problems that you're going to do will be on page 130, uh, 52, 54, 56, probably enough for that. Um, come back for part three. Thank you for listening.